If you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before moving on. We could begin solving this question by introducing some notation. So why don't we let S represent the surface area of this melting snowball. We can also let D represent its diameter. And then finally, we can let R equal the radius. So those are just some variables to represent our quantities of this problem. We might next make a list of what we know. Now the simplest thing we know is that the diameter is 10 centimeters. So we can just perhaps say that D is equal to 10 centimeters. And then we have the surface area decreasing at a rate, and this is a key word right here, of one centimeter squared per minute. Now rates are expressed as derivatives. That's actually what a derivative is. It's the rate of change in a quantity. So in this case, the rate of change of the surface area is negative one centimeter squared per minute. Notice I said it was negative because the surface area is decreasing. So putting this all together in notation, we would say that the derivative of the surface area with respect to time is equal to negative one centimeter squared per minute. So we've laid out all the symbols and the known information. Next, we're going to need at least one equation in order to proceed. Now, we're dealing here with the surface area of a snowball, which we'll assume is a sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is equal to four pi times radius squared. That's just a known formula from the world of geometry that you may have learned in a previous course. We'll also recall that the radius of a circle or of a sphere in this case is equal to half of the diameter. So we could say one half d. And it turns out that since the question deals more with diameter than it does with radius, it's going to be useful for us to take this expression for the radius and substitute it into our surface area formula. So let's go ahead and do that. We would have the surface area is equal to 4 pi, and put a parenthesis here, we'll have half of the diameter squared, like this. Now why don't we go ahead and square the quantity 1 half d. Remember that when you're squaring 1 half d, you're doing 1 half d multiplied by 1 half d. And this of course would give you 1 fourth d squared. So we'll come back in here and simplify by doing 4 pi multiplied by 1 fourth d squared. We can next multiply the 4 pi by the 1 fourth. If it helps you might want to put a 1 under here. And then when you multiply these, these fractions highlighted, you're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So 4 pi times 1 is 4 pi, and then 1 times 4 is 4. Notice the 4's will cancel here. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so you're just going to be left with 1 pi. So you have pi d squared. Now this is a wonderful formula because it has surface area in terms of diameter. But we need to transform it into the language of rates. And in order to do that, we differentiate both sides of the equation. We take the derivative of both sides of the equation. The left side's easy. When you take the derivative of s, you're going to be doing this with respect to time, as they say. So that simply becomes the derivative of s with respect to time, ds dt. The other side's a little trickier. You have to use a power rule along with chain rules. So you're going to pull the 2 down in front you'll have 2 pi times the diameter. Now, the diameter's power will now be just 1, because we have to subtract 1 from the exponent. And then chain rule comes in and says, hey, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of your variable. So this will be the derivative of the diameter with respect to time, which we might enclose in parentheses just to distinguish it from the other quantities. Now, we have two out of the three unknowns here. Remember, if we go back up, ds dt was negative one centimeter squared per minute, and then the diameter was 10 centimeters. So we'll fill those in. Whoops. We'll have negative one centimeters squared per minute 
equals 2 pi times the diameter of 10 centimeters multiplied by the derivative of the diameter with respect to time. And it turns out this is actually what we're looking for. Go back and remind yourself, the question wanted the rate at which the diameter was decreasing. So that would be this dd dt quantity. Let's multiply the 2 pi by the 10. So we're going to have 20 pi centimeters multiplied by our quantity for which we are solving. Next, we can divide both sides of this equation by 20 pi centimeters. And by doing that, we're going to be able to isolate our unknown quantity. So these will cancel. This is a little tricky over here. We'll have negative 1 over 20 pi, so that's not too bad. But then in terms of the units, when we're looking at these units right here, let's come off on the side and analyze that. We would have centimeters squared over minutes, and then we're dividing that by centimeters. Remember, we can put the centimeters here over 1. When you divide, you can also multiply by the reciprocal. That's an equivalent operation. So you have centimeters squared over minutes multiplied by 1 over centimeters. These would cancel out so that you're left with just centimeters per minute. So you have the final answer as negative 1 over 20 pi centimeters per minute is equal to the rate of change in diameter.